Hello everyone. Welcome back to Crockett Creek Brewery. Thank you for joining me today. This is the beginning of our Viking series. I am so excited about this series. This is going to be a series of four meads that we're going to be making. All of these meads are going to be aged till this fall and this winter when they're going to be enjoyed. So these are going to be aging for a long time. And these are a lot of recipes I've wanted to try for a long time. So here we go. Today we're going to be making Yule Mead. Now this is a mead uh, of my own creation. I've come up with a recipe for it. Uh, however, it is based off of a traditional methaglin, which a methaglin is a spiced or herbed mead. Let me quickly go over what we're going to use in our Yule Mead. The honey we're going to be using is Desert Creek Honey. Now I purchased this off of Amazon, but it's actually a somewhat local honey for my area of Texas. We're going to be using three pounds and four ounces. Here's our mixture of spices. I've already mixed them together, so I'll quickly go over them. We have one cinnamon stick, three cloves, half a teaspoon of allspice, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, and 10 juniper berries. I thought all these spices would go very well together. We're also gonna be using one orange zest, one whole orange zested, and half of an orange, or half of a lemon zested. We're going to need one cup of black tea and 30 raisins. This mead is supposed to represent something along the lines of a mulled wine. If you've ever had mulled wine around Christmas time, it's a very warming, uh, spicy beverage made with red wine or cider with mulling sp uh, spices. I wanted to create my own mulling blend and use it in a mead so that when I enjoy it around Christmas time, it should bring back some of those memories. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Now I've already measured out my uh, three pounds and four ounces of honey. It's in mason jars right now because it was easier for me to weigh out. And I have it warming here on the stove on low heat. Let's go ahead and pour this into our carboy. If anyone asks, this is wildflower honey that we're using today. Now we're going to rinse out our mason jars so we get all of our honey. I have here measured out one gallon of water. We're probably not going to use anywhere close to a full gallon. As you can see, we already have about a third of our carboy full of water. But this was just uh, for my own uh, measurements. Honey is very expensive, so we do not want to waste any bit of this.
Okay, there we go. That is three pounds and four ounces of honey. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of water to this and let's shake it up and get all of that honey dissolved. see here it's quite separated. Let's go ahead and mix this up and see if we can get it all dissolved. This is great for adding oxygen into your must, as well as allowing you to get a proper reading from your hydrometer when it comes time for that. Okay, that's, whew, it spit at me. That is most of our honey dissolved. What we're gonna do now is go ahead and add our spices. Like I said, this is one cinnamon stick, three cloves, 10 juniper berries, half of a teaspoon of allspice and a quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg. Okay, there we go. There's our spices. Let's go ahead and add our half of a lemon zest and our orange zest. I did this instead of adding, oops, instead of adding an orange to it or a lemon to it, because I thought this would imbue more of the essence of the orange and the lemon instead of the flavor of the fruit. I wanted the oils, I wanted the aroma, not necessarily the flavor of orange fruit. You had any question everything here has been sanitized even my zester was sanitized my funnel my teaspoon measuring cups everything has been sanitized let's add a little bit more water to this and rinse out some of our zest There we go. All right, so this is really, really foamy. I don't know if you can see that. Very malty looking. Let's shake this up. We might have to let this sit for a minute and calm down. There we go. 
That is really, really foamy. So before we add any more water or do a specific gravity test, we need to go ahead and add our T. This is one cup of black English breakfast tea. Let's give that one more shake. Okay, we're actually going to let this sit for a few minutes and calm down. Let it uh, settle. If any of the honey is not mixed in, we'll let it settle out. We'll let the foam calm down, and if we have to, we'll shake it up a few more times until all of the honey is dissolved. When all that honey is dissolved, I'll be back, and I'll see you again shortly. Okay, everyone, so we've let this sit for several minutes. The foam has calmed down a little, but not by much. You can probably still see it right here on the top of the carboy. I think we'll be okay getting a hydrometer reading. Now, I measured out when we started three pounds and four ounces of honey. That should be enough honey to get us to a potential ABV of 15%. In specific gravity terms, that's a specific gravity of 1.11 one five. Oh, one point one one five. Eleven fifteen is what we're going for. Let's see if we can dip down below the foam and get enough of the liquid to get a good reading. We're probably going to pick up quite a bit of orange zest. But that's okay. Okay, so we are a little high. We are at a specific gravity of 1.120, which probably means I haven't added close to a gallon of water to our must. So what we're gonna do is add just a little bit of water to it. We're gonna be pushing the limits on our headspace. So what we'll probably have to do is put a blow off tube on this. Okay, let's add just a little bit more water. All right, that's about as much as I dare to add. We are right into the neck of the carboy. Let's shake this up one more time. We'll let it sit for a little bit longer and we'll check again with our hydrometer and see where we're at.
Okay, everyone. So we have mixed a little bit of water in it. We have reached a specific gravity of 1.118. Uh, My original goal was to reach a specific gravity of 1.115, but I don't think we're going to get there. We have run out of headspace. What we're going to do now is go ahead and add our yeast. We are going to be using Lauvin K1V 1116 Champagne Yeast. This has a specific gravity tolerance, or an alcohol tolerance rather, of 18%. We're using about half a packet. There we go. We're going to save this for another brew. Let me go ahead and add our test tube back in. These go back into our sanitizer liquid. Let's give it one more good shake to get rid of any clumps of yeast. And there we go. I have my airlock here, which is filled halfway with sanitizer liquid. Put that right there. And we're going to put a label on it with our original gravity, its name, and its date. So thank you all for joining me here for this new series of Viking Meads. And we'll see you on the next video where we cover Viking's blood. I hope you're enjoying this series, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye now.